Freeze response. Well, let me start uh, from explaining a little bit about or reviewing a little bit about the fight or flight response. When we experience, when we perceive danger in our environment, our bodies start to tune up to then to prepare us to flee or to fight. So it's the muscles all over the body. It's an invol involuntary part of the nervous system that brings all the muscles, it tunes all the muscles up, particularly the muscles for action. So, uh, and then if there is a threat, we're running and we're running for our lives. And so we get a reciprocal contraction of extensor and flexor muscles so that our bodies run in a coordinated way. NICABM is currently offering our advanced master program on the treatment of trauma for $300 off for a limited time. Click the link below to learn more. Now, if we are unable to, to escape, then that it like a freeze flame, a freeze frame of the mobilized muscles. So instead of the muscles working reciprocally, the muscles are now working against each other. So for example, when I pick up my glass of water here and I bring the glass to my mouth to drink, I'm contracting my biceps muscles, my flexor muscles. But at the same time, I'm inhibiting my extensor muscles because if I didn't, then I would be just, uh, 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 I'm spilling water all over my computer. So, um, so anyhow, what happens is when we're mobilized to escape and we're unable to escape, the muscles get locked. So all the, extens the extensor muscles and the flexor muscles act against each other. So we're absolutely stiff. So again, here is the flexor muscle. Here's the extensor muscle. Here's the two muscles, two groups of muscles contracting together. That basically is the freeze response. And the freeze response, it protects us in a way, well, it protected us because it, 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 it mobilized us for, to fight or to flee, but it doesn't really protect us at this point. It leaves us stiff. You could say scared stiff. So uh, that is going to limit us because we lose our basic coordination, we'll lose our ability the next time there's a threat to be able to react, to respond in a coherent way. And so in a sense, because all our muscles are now poised to alertness, we now experience threat as coming everywhere. That's the key, that's how it limits us. It limits us because however our body is, that will be how we perceive the world. So we're in the fight or flight response, we'll perceive the world as being threatening. If we're in the collapse response, we feel helplessness and experience everything in the world as potentially mortal threat. So anyhow, the freeze response are the muscles that are locked in against each other at a very high level of activation. And that energy is stuck in us. Now, therapeutically, the energy of the fight or flight response is still is actually locked in those frozen muscles, the freeze response. And what we have to do when we're working with somebody in the freeze response, this is really important therapeutically, we have to help them access that locked in energy one small amount at a time. So I like to think of this as uh, the, the fight or flight response which then gets locked in and all of this energy is compressed. So what we need to do therapeutically is help the person release that energy and move and, and have that energy uh, move into movement and do that one small amount at a time, one small amount at a time, not one small amount at a time. So the person isn't overwhelmed because that's the key because we're in the freeze response, how to get out of the freeze response. And it has to be gently, and it has to be, what I term I use is titration. You titrate 
your access. So then it moves into free movement. And the person is moving now from fixity and stuckness and rigidity into slow.